Hey everyone, Ollie here. So on my Instagram and Twitter, I've shared quite a few photos, sort of product photos, where I have the product against a sort of black background and, you know, very moody, very sort of stylish, minimalist sort of product photos. A lot of you have asked, how do I do them? How do I take them? You know, what's my setup like? And what's the process of doing them? So I wanted to go through them today in a sort of vlog style format, you could say, um, and basically show you how I take those photos and everything that I do to get them looking how I like. So let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to do is actually set up our space. Now, I think this is the most important part because most of the work should actually go into setting up your space rather than thinking about figuring out your camera and things like that. Taking the picture with the camera should actually be the easiest part, that should be the quickest part. Setting up the space, getting it ready is where the time should be spent so that you can do the least sort of editing, the least sort of changes after you've taken the shot. So when it comes to the background, I use these things. So they're basically like black pieces of card, which you can get from any art shop. If you go to your local art shop, you should be able to pick these up. This is um, A1 size and it's around five millimeters thick. So it's quite a thick piece of cardboard. You're going to want a couple of pieces, of course, because you're going to want the background and you're going to want the actual part where your product sits. So yeah, just get a couple of these. They're very, very cheap. Only cost a few pounds, a few dollars. Um, and I think definitely worth it. So let's get it set up. And it's really as simple as that when it comes to setting it up. I have a black piece resting up against the wall and then I have a black piece at the bottom. Make sure, of course, that your space is actually clean and tidy because if you have any sort of dust or any sort of specks or anything like that, any sort of dirt on the paper or on the cardboard, it's just gonna make it a bit more of an effort to sort of get rid of those when it comes to editing the photo itself. Now we're going to set up the camera. So I'm going to be using the Sony a7 III and I highly recommend, of course, putting a camera on a tripod, but don't feel like you need to have exactly the same setup. You definitely don't need the same camera or the same tripod setup. You can do it with whatever you currently have because any mirrorless camera, any DSLR will work as long as you can set your camera into a sort of manual mode, basically. So as I mentioned, I'm using the Sony a7 III, but my lens of choice Choice is the 28 to 75 millimeter by Tamron. Um, I really, really love this lens. I just think having a zoom lens gives you a bit more creativity, a bit more freedom. Um, a prime lens would be sharper, but honestly, like this camera and this lens is already pretty sharp enough for me anyway. Next thing we're going to do is set up the lighting. The light I'm using is by Falcon Eyes. I'll leave a link to it down in the description below. But don't feel like you have to use this light. Any light that lets you sort of force a direction and, and keep it sort of pointed in a specific direction will do. You know, you don't need to use the light that I'm specifically using because the light I'm using isn't exactly cheap. It's definitely not like a super budget sort of light, but compared to other lights out there, I'd say I'd say it's, it's relatively affordable, relatively. <laughs> um, but yeah, we'll get that set up. So you can see that I've got the light here and right now it's got a big dome on it which diffuses the light it sort of makes the light go everywhere scatters the light but what i'm going to do is i'm going to put this on it so this grid came with the light and what this does is it basically gives the light a bit more direction so you have a bit more control over the direction of the light making sure that it only lights the source the, the bit that you're trying to light rather than lighting the whole area So the next thing we're going to want to do is choose our product that we want to take a photo of. Now I'm going to use my Apple Watch that I've just got on my wrist. Just easy, I've got it available right here. And because it's black as well, it'll give that sort of black effect, black sort of vibe to the picture, just make it much easier. Because you know, we're going for that sort of stealthy, all black sort of look. Um, and I think the Apple Watch is perfect for that. So let's set that up. Right, so now that we have our camera, our lighting and our product all in place, we want to set up our camera. So as I mentioned, I've got my camera in manual mode, which you definitely want to do. You want to put your camera in manual mode, mainly because when you start changing angles and you start moving the product and stuff, you want to keep the sort of exposure, the settings, the colors, all exactly the same so that you have consistency across all of your images. So we have it in manual and now we're going to adjust our settings. Mind the crack on the screen. That's not actually a crack on the screen itself. That's just on the screen protector, thankfully. Um, the camera itself is completely fine. <laughs> anyway, now that we're in manual mode, we want to start playing around with our settings. So we'll put the ISO quite low. Uh, put it at 400. Um, what we'll also do is adjust the white balance. So we'll have the white balance 
um, at around 5200 I'd say um, we have the aperture at 2.8 and then we can bring up the shutter speed uh, mainly because you know we want to capture it quite quickly um, and I think that might be it so actually let's zoom in on our product as well and now we can move around the lighting so that we don't get such a savage reflection on, on the on the product itself so and we also need to center our product so let's do that so there we are we've moved the lighting moved the product made sure everything is as centered as we can be actually i might need to align it a little bit more there we go i actually quite like having sort of half the light reflection on the watch itself again as i mentioned before make sure the product the space everything is as clean as it possibly can be i wipe down the watch with a microfiber cloth making sure that there's no marks on it no fingerprints or anything like that um, and i think we're pretty ready to go so we'll take our first shot get it in focus first <laughs> There's our first shot. We'll take a couple more shots. So we've got a few shots of the watch now, which I think will be nice to edit. Now we're going to set up another product, my iPhone specifically, and take some pictures of that. Right, so now that we've taken our photos, it's time to import them into Lightroom. You can use Lightroom on a computer or an iPad, whatever else it may be. I'm using it on the iPad Pro. I love it, it's an absolutely fantastic setup. It's a great way to edit pictures on the go. So I've already imported my photos here. As you can see, I have a few of them that we took. We'll start off with the Apple Watch one. And as you can see here, it already looks pretty good as it is. Um, but what I usually like to do is I like to add some sort of coloring to to the photo even though it is pretty much black and white i still like to have a sort of a tinge of, of some sort of color or whatever so i like to use my presets i'll leave a link down to my presets below if you guys are interested in them i have a bunch of them um, and we'll go through them see what looks good basically i actually like like this one a lot um we'll go through even further see what else we can find Oh, I like this one. I think I like this one actually. We'll bring down the, so we'll do this preset. We'll bring down the exposure a little bit. And you know what? I'm already pretty happy with that. I love how it has a sort of light color in the bottom left corner and going to a dark color in the, in the top right. Uh, we'll play around with the temperature maybe. Mm, that's a bit too blue. Maybe around there. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. And then what we can do is we can copy the settings of that picture and we can bring it over to another one. So we can just paste it. There we go. This one definitely needs to have its exposure brought up a little bit. It's a bit too dark right now. Maybe bring up the shadows. Yeah, I mean, I don't think this picture is actually all that great, to be honest. I think it's a bit too, there's not really much going on in this picture. Um, so I definitely like the first one that I took. Again, we'll copy the settings for this one. We'll edit one of the iPhone ones. I actually really, really like this shot. So we'll paste the settings for this one. Oh yeah, I like that. I think that looks really good already. Just makes it super easy to, to paste my presets and make it basically consistent across all of them. As you can see here, going through them, it just looks great. We'll do this one as well. Yeah, I really like these. They've come out better than I thought they would. Really impressed just by how how much data there is when you're shooting raw. You know, when you're shooting a raw picture, how much information there is, how much you can manipulate. 
And as you can see here, it just looks so moody. It looks so, it looks classy at the same time, I think. It looks, it looks so sort of stealthy. Really, really like the look of it. Let's edit one more. Oh, this one's a bit too dark, I think. Oh, here we go. We can bring up the exposure. And as you can see, it really makes a world of difference. And there we are. It really is as simple as that. I hope that the way I did it all makes sense. And that if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. As I mentioned, doing all of the work beforehand, before you actually get to taking the shot and doing any of the editing, doing all of that will really help in making sure that it looks right. And you know, when you actually take the shot and start editing, those sorts of things shouldn't really take long. It shouldn't be something that you spend a lot of time doing because you wanna get the shot as right as possible within the camera. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe for more.